everybody, Hale, and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings and a continuation of a series that I run here on this channel, uh, which is our Deity Discussion Series. So Hale, and welcome to today's video. My name is Jesse, and I am the host here on this channel. And if you haven't yet already, and things that pertain to Norse heathenry, you know, also true Germanic paganism, that sort of thing, if that interests you and you want to see more of it, please click right down here to subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss anything. Be sure to click the bell notification so that way you are up, uh, updated every time that I do upload new content. All right, so as I said, uh, today is another uh, video in a playlist uh, sort of series that I've run here on the channel before, and I haven't actually done any specific videos for this place in a while, the Deity Discussion Series. So today is episode 16 of this series. You're going to probably see some videos annotated up here along the way as we go that are in that series. You can also go to the uh, channel section of uh, YouTube and click on playlists and you'll find the Deity Discussion um, series there so you can catch up on all of the previous gods and goddesses from Norse legend and myth that I've talked about already. But today's video is going to be about a somewhat lesser known uh, or lesser important, well I wouldn't say maybe lesser important, but he has a very important part in the mythology um, of things. Um, but today we're going to be talking about Vidar, okay? So, um, as with most of my other deity discussion videos that I've done, I like to kind of reflect a bit about what we do know from either sources or, you know, any sort of texts or, or, or literary, you know, sources that we have that kind of back up our knowledge or information that we have about the deities that we're discussing. And then I also like to open it up for, uh, you know, information sharing and, and what we, maybe my involvement is or has been with the specific deity that we're talking about. Um, so by the end of this video, be sure to check the comment section and add your uh, pieces that you want to so choose to add if you've worked with this specific deity or not. So as we go along, I've got notes that I'm going to be reading from, which is typical. <laughs> Can't always keep it retained up here in this uh, meat box up here in my head. So anyways, um, Vidar, um, we're using a, uh, a re medieval uh, pronunciation of the gods' names. So Vidar is an Old Norse name. You'll see it up here on the screen somewhere. Um, and it's usually uh, thought of to mean the wide ruling one. Um, and a, a Vidar is one of the uh, younger generations of gods who survived Ragnarok. Okay, so after the Twilight of the Gods is passed in, in, in the mythology, you've got several figures, you've got several of the, uh, the sacred who survive through that whole thing, and Vidar is one of them. Ragnarok, of course, being the, you know, cataclysmic end of the cosmos in, 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 in Norse mythology. Not the end being the, like, once and for all end, but a sort of end of one thing and the beginning of another you know, kind of maintaining that approach to a cyclic uh, ideology um, in, the, in the Norse cosmos. So, um, virtually all of the references in uh, Old Norse literature to Vidar are concerned with his role in Ragnarok, okay? We know basically little to nothing of his quote-unquote personality, you know, what his temperament is, what his attitude is, so to speak, um, or any other function really that he has outside of those particular events during Ragnarok. So during Ragnarok, for those that may not know what Vidar's role is, um, Vidar is Odin's son, okay? He is a son of Odin and the son of, um, the result of the, uh, the union of Odin and a giantess or Jotun called Grider. Okay, now immediately upon uh, Odin's demise during Ragnarok, um, which is uh, when Odin faces Fenrir, the wolf, um, Vidar's role is immediate. You know, he avenges his father's death by um, stamping on the bottom jaw of Fenrir and, and pushing up on the top jaw and with his sword slicing the 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 mouth of Fenrir and basically just breaking his head apart um, to avenge his father's death. Now there's some interesting things to note 
in this that um, this uh, the ability for Vidar to do this is is largely um, due to the fact that he has this sort of magical shoe, this thing that he's been working on for all of time, uh, basically up leading up to Ragnarok to make sure that he has the tool uh, and and the ability to uh, you know fulfill his role um, in the mythology. Uh, now. The shoe that was crafted for this particular moment, for this particular purpose, um, is considered to be like the strongest and sturdiest of all the shoes, and um, probably also has some sort of you know magical or mystical properties to it. You know, um, and, and again, with that shoe uh, on his foot, he is able to stamp down and, and pry apart the jaws of Fenrir, Fenrir and therefore, uh, and, and thereby rather. Uh, end Fenrir's existence. Now, there are some things in uh, throughout time where in Vidar is uh, sometimes referred to the god of the thick shoe. Uh, we have a we have a relationship to him and well made or, or well uh, crafted shoes, um, as he is constantly in the process of building up the soles of his shoe to perform, as I said, his duty. And, his, and fulfill his role in Ragnarok. Um, traditionally, there are there are some instances wherein shoemakers um, and even people who maybe made their own shoes uh, were encouraged to dedicate a small scrap of leather um, that they trimmed off of their sh the, the sole of their shoe um, and offered as sort of like a sacrifice to Vidar, who would then collect them and add them slowly to his own soles of the shoes uh, or the shoe that he wears. Um, we also see some uh, uh, references to Vidar being called a silent god, or the silent god, although there's really no explanation for this epithet, and um, don't necessarily know why uh, he was given that name, although there are some speculations, which we'll probably get into the, later on in this video. Now. He is said to be also, in some of the lore, he is said to be the sh one of the strongest of the gods, second only to Thor, Thor being the strongest. Um, and that the gods depend on Vidar uh, in times of trouble. So some scholars theorize that this um, silent god or the silent god appellation may have something to do with um, particular ancient rituals of vengeance in, in, in Norse culture. Um, because it may have been that individuals who were preparing for a uh, vengeance battle or, or, or trying to, you know, sort of balance the scales, as it were, something was done wrong and there was vengeance needing to be sought as, as retribution, um, that um, there, there's some uh, speculation among scholars that uh, during that, that, that ritual that there was some sort of uh, refraining from speaking as a part of the ritual, ritual purification before engaging in this sort of act. Um, so there's that. There, there, there could be very well a reason why Vidar is referenced as such because of these um, certain acts that were taken upon various cultures, and especially Norse cultures, that uh, in, in preparation for this sort of thing. Um, but elsewhere in the lore, um, we have at least one specific thing uh, in Grimnismal, where in Vidar's land, one of his, you know, uh, Odin talks about various realms of the gods, and Vidar's realm is one of them, but his land is described as a place of brushwood, tall grass. Um, the significance of the association of this particular kind of landscape is kind of, like, unknown, like, why this is particularly associated to him. Uh, but it's in Grimnismal. Um, you can check over here. Someone on screen, I'm going to try to annotate or at least have some sort of text referencing where you can find it in Good Small if you're uh, searching for it throughout this video. Um, but the, the, the stanza says that uh, brush wood grows and high grass widely in Vidar's land. And there, the son proclaims on his horse's back uh, that he's keen to avenge his father. So these are some of the literary sources where at least we know of uh, Vidar being mentioned or having a place or a realm uh, specifically uh, to him, and it was described in, in somewhat deep, in you know, specific detail in Grimsmal. 
Now, aside from that, aside from places attested to him in the lore um, and how his land was described, we have at least two places um, or place names from Norway that contain his name. We have Virsu, which is from Vidarshof, which is to mean the temple of Vidar. And then we also have Vistkiru, or from the Old Norse word uh, Vidarsjolf, which is to say a crag or pinnacle of Vidar. So this seems to suggest that the figure of Vidar that is featured in pagan, you know, Norse religious practices um, suggests that he just, he wasn't just a literary figure, that they, that, you know, because he has, uh, that there are places in Scandinavia, even to this day, that have his names tied or attested to him, uh, suggests that he had some sort of prominent uh, attention given to him by the uh, indigenous folks of that of that place. Now, unfortunately, we know that Vidar is um, only the avenger of Odin and the slayer of Fenrir during Ragnarok. We only know um, maybe some other tantalizing but wayward details that really don't add up to any particular, let alone comprehensive, portrait of a personality or mythological slash, you know, religious role. We don't know a whole lot else about him other than his role and the fact that he has name places in uh, places of Scandinavia. So sadly, the question of who exactly Vidar is or was prior, you know, to the Christianization and, and of Scandinavia, the, the conversion period of Scandinavia, um, is, is, is essentially unanswerable. We just don't have that level of information documented down for us to, to draw any sort of realistic conclusion on. Now that whole thing brings into the part of this discussion that I like to bring in myself and your insight on because hey, what has been written down, what was documented um, is all well and good. We can, we can draw a lot from that, but we have a lot of folks now and today who develop relationships with the sacred through their own ritualistic practices, through their own individual cultic practices, through their own hearth cults, through, ver through various things that can sometimes add to and em embellish upon what little we may already have in existence as far as documented sources. So, um, some of the things that, you know, uh, call attention to me is that, you know, what we do know of Vidar and his role in Ragnarok is that this is a god, a deity of the Aesir, who is a god of action, a god of no thought uh, prior to the action being done. There is a specific role and a specific purpose attested to this uh, deity. Um, and when we work with the sacred, when we decide we want to either you know, perform ritual or do bloat to a specific deity, we, we want to uh, understand or know at least as much as we can about these figures so that way we can appeal to them and we can garner their attention and garner their favor uh, when we perform our set rituals. Um, so Vidar being someone who is, you know, obviously attested to and, 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 and connected to acts of vengeance, you know, when vengeance is sought, when vengeance is exacted, um, there is very little thought put into what happens beforehand. And Vidar does not appear to me as being the figure in lore as having any sort of premeditated idea of how something should be done. He is a god of action. He is somebody that is going to just do the thing. He knows his role, and he knows the role that has been destined for him to do, and there's no question about it. So when we have times, and this is just my thing, right, guys? This is my, you know, mind fire kind of just rolling around in this, like I said, this 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 meat box of mine. Um, that Vidar can be one that we can... Uh, perhaps appeal to or we can we can seek to uh, exemplify in our actions when things need to be done that we know just need to be done. There's no question about it. There's no understanding of what is right, what is wrong. That's all been established already and it just needs to be done. The action needs to be executed. The deed needs to be done. Um, and we can perhaps draw strength and draw inspiration from Vidar who, against all odds, against everything else you know, was able and is able to exact vengeance on his father by breaking apart the jaws of the Fenrir wolf and and fulfill his role 
in that aspect. You know, um, have I personally worked with Vidar? No, I haven't had a need to seek that sort of action or seek that sort of um, control or that, that, you know what I mean? Like it, 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 there was no reason for me, at least up to this point in my heathen practices that I needed to, you know, find that sort of inspiration, find that sort of strength. So I'm curious to know what is your perception? How have you, if you have um, worked with Vidar in your ritualistic practices and if you want to so share please do so down in the comments section and I'm sure like as always myself and others who watch these videos are going to be intricately and interested intricately interested <laughs> in uh, seeing what you have to say all right everybody so that is today's video on uh, Vidar and his role in Ragnarok and how I think his role kind of plays for us now uh, as heathens in modern times you know the the strength of vidar the conviction the ability to just do what needs to be done um vengeance quite often has a uh, negative tone uh, attached to it at least in modern times but one thing i want to you know kind of maybe think about in conclusion is that um it's all about it's reciprocity you know what i mean it's it's the reciprocation of an act it's the paying of shield it's the doing things that balance out the deed that was done before it. So, obviously, the the act of Fenrir destroying Odin in, in Ragnarok, there was a balance that needs to be sought, even though we are in, in the lore, at least Ragnarok is a time of, of just utter, you know, destruction. Many of the, the gods of lore are, are being destroyed themselves, and, and Vidar is one uh, that lasts throughout this destruction, you know, and throughout this chaotic part. Um, and, and lives on past that. So he is the role of action, uh, vengeful action that balances out the deeds that could have potentially ruined everything for everybody and, and not just the gods, but all of mankind, all of the cosmo cosmos. So that's my idea, that's my thought process. Very anxious to see what everybody has to say about Vidar. Have you worked with him in ritual? Um, do you have anything to add so jump down into the comments let myself and everybody else here watching know what you think of this video if you liked it please give it a thumbs up uh, share it around with uh, all your friends your family your, your heathen communities your pagan collectives all the folks that you think may be interested in stuff like this definitely please share these videos because the more people that see it the more that interact obviously the more that this channel not just this channel but other channels like this uh, will be shared along because the algorithm the way YouTube works is that you know, it's not just me that gets shared out there, but it's a lot of other folks like this. So my content and content like mine, uh, if you want to see more of it, definitely interact with these videos. It's greatly appreciated. Don't forget to check the description area, the link tree specifically with all the ways that you can support Midgard Musings. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. As always, uh, thank you all again so much for watching today's video. Hail, and I will see you all in the next one.